de Global Latin Factor Podcast. That would be pretty cool though, because they, they did that. It's not a song song. It's actually what it is. Like what what it what they do is called a conga, and a conga is pretty much just like a just the rhythm, just and rhythm, and then the, and no words, nothing, just people jamming out and people just dancing. Gloria Stefan, right? Yep, yeah. Gloria Stefan uh, was the Congo, yeah, la Congo, okay. el con, la conga, Cong and then all it is is just freestyle and people just they huh. usually do it to, at the end of the night. Yeah, when they're about to finish the session, they just jam out, they do this thing, and then everybody just going crazy dancing. Nice, that's pretty cool. I mean, or I was thinking of uh, probably do that. cumbia. I'm surprised y'all don't have it. Let me show you. Sorry. Jared Crispin. <laughs> <laughs> the Global Latin Factor. Yep. <laughs> what about the, the cumbia uh, trap reggaeton? Sounds pretty cool. I, yeah. I feel it would be something like that. Yeah, I'm working on something like that. Because so. honestly, it's not about the lyrics no more so much as you want it to. It's just about a catchy something. Yeah. No, it's, gonna be. it's so sad. Catchy but, phrase. And... <laughs> What about the timing of your songs? What are you working on? Because right now, you know, the, the extension, attention span of a human is like minimal. Yeah. Like I earlier yeah. asked you a question about the name and then I asked you again about <laughs> Se me fue de volada. And I wasn't, I wasn't paying attention. I'm like, what did I just do? Yeah. But what are you working as far as the link though? Because even the, the rap videos now are just a whole lot shorter than it. It's yeah. like yeah. a verse, like hook, verse. Two minutes. And, and, and it's also like a. That. A, a strategy for more plays. Yeah, more plays. Because the too. song is lit, you know, you got to play it again. Yep. Because it's only like two minutes or a minute. So you're like, all right, let me play it again. And, and, they, link, it again. and they linked it with the merch too. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay, so I'm all confused about that part. So you, you, it's not a play anymore. It's not a stream anymore. It's like they linked it with a merch, a piece of clothing that you buy or any kind of article that you sell and it's counted as like a play. I'm like, what? Like what the heck is going on? Yeah. Is that how it works like, now? Like the bundles? Yeah, yeah, like there's a kind of bundle, but yeah, it counts same. for like plays or, or, or mm -hmm. you or know, CD sales. Or CD probably. sales. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah I, don't know much, I don't know all of that yet. That's but. just so weird because it works <laughs> like that now, right? I it's get not it. necessarily okay, music. Yeah. And that treats me out because what happened to the music? Yeah. It's not about the music anymore. It's about everything else that you sell with it. And it counts like a like a album sale. I'm like, yeah. Hmm. But that wasn't an album. That was a shirt. Well, that was like a or keychain. That, that was a shirt with an album. Yeah, that was a shirt with an album. But they you they know? just wanted the shirt. They just wanted the shirt. I didn't care about the album. I was probably they didn't even play it. So, they probably heard it on Spotify later on. Yeah, on so that. I guess that was that's why they're releasing all these shoes. And yep, that. things like that. They all it's all a thing which adds up. Uh, it's just crazy to me that it happens. But anyways, it happens. Okay, yeah. so you were saying so y'all working on something. Mm -hmm. So as far as the timing, is it going to be a factor for you? Have you thought about that part? Yeah, it is. Um, uh, like I said, I, I'm making songs shorter, where they uh, pretty much straight to to the grano, you know, straight, straight, straight to it. Like I'll make like a short uh, intro and then straight to the chorus, to the catchy part, and then add like a a, a good verse, and then again, you know, chorus, and yeah. then ju just make the songs more of a cat catchy feel, mm -hmm. and uh, not so repetitive and like as far as in in instruments. Um, because that's what I noticed with mo all the new modern music, it, it goes like that. So, um, I think that's a new song structure nowadays that that uh artists are following and producers are kind of looking into. So, yeah, you know, it, it'll be um, it'll be kind of smart of our part to kind of yeah take that route as well. Whether you want it or not, some you got to go with the wave of the way yeah. that things are people. Because again, the attention span for people is just very short. Mm -hmm. It's just. Even thirty seconds, twenty seconds. That's why TikTok is so like. Psh. Yeah, and we used to make, only a few seconds. We used to make songs that were like four, four minutes, minutes, almost five. But you know, it's we started noticing that over time those songs weren't really getting enough yeah. plays, just because they're too long, and the shorter songs were getting more streams. So, you know that that that's why we also. You know which songs route. can get away with that and actually be and not not I haven't noticed recently because I really haven't heard but country. The way the country structure is, it's a hook verse hook bridge, hook verse hook, or somewhere in there. It has a bridge, always has a bridge, mm -hmm. hook verse hook, whatever the case. But it's always that kind of structure, same. And it can go for about four minutes or so. And it's always, country is one of the most played genres is there for the yeah. same way that, that it's structured. And it can be that long, but it's mm -hmm. just the way that it's structured, it, it works yeah. for country. <laughs> Maybe I can do Kumia country. What? <laughs> I'm getting all these ideas. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just adding stuff and talk because I think, I think we still. 
as far as sound, like I know y'all artists, I know that 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 y'all creators and things like that. Uh, but sometimes, we're like we're so accustomed to the things that things are done, then and, and it's kind of not afraid, but it's weird how people are gonna take it that we don't take chances to see. Man, let's see what it does. Mm-hmm. Let's see what happens. Or we, why does it always have to be like that? Why can't we just? Why can't we do it that this way? You know? All right. Yeah. Why can't it be like this way? Like Selena, why does always guy like singing cumbia? Why can't it be a female? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And she took it from there or different things like Fonsi was doing all kinds of different things before he got Despacito into the reggaeton, cut off shirts and everything. Like, <laughs> you that's true, right? Bro, <laughs> you, you are not that guy. You used to be a different guy when you were singing all the other stuff. All of a sudden, he the became guitar. That's yeah, like... reinvented himself and became something different. And mm. we're like, oh, what? Yeah, like that's dope. So I think sometimes we just, I'll, there's the saying that people say about. I think I saw the box. I saw the box, but I think it's still limited. So, like, why? There's no box. There's like any anything, any direction that you can go, you can create, you can do whatever. Because it's music at the end of the day, right? Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. feel like uh, also the audience, um, they grow and they kind of learn of new styles that are you know coming out, and so they get accustomed to that new style as well. Yeah. So whenever you know one of the artists that they follow starts doing it too, it, it's not weird for them. Yeah. Because you know they kind of know. They're familiar with that too, and they've been if they've been following you for years. They've also been growing as you've been growing. Yeah. So it, you know it, it's 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 not really complicated with that. Um, it, it does get more complicated whenever you're trying to reach an older generation that kind of, you know, they they tend to just stay with like what what they're accustomed to, and you know, so change is pretty hard for them. Yeah. But you know. Whenever they they kind of notice that it's not too different from what we used to play, then mm. you know they, they kind of accept it and they're like, "Okay, oh, okay so, this sounds so, good." So you're saying that even though you could, you're trying to stay within the same one because you don't want to have your your following that you have that grown mm. with you. They know your sound and they have seen you evolve. So all of a sudden you give them something way off, and then yeah. they're just like, "Eh, turn away." Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to make that bridge too too big, too big, too too soon. I got you. You know, I got so you. I see. Um, that's why that's part of the reason why we we're also releasing singles, mm-hmm. just to kind of uh, test the waters, test the waters. But mostly just to kind of do like we're doing a cumbia urbana with reggaeton here. We're doing a clásica colombiana with some urban sound like electronic sound and then we releasing another song with like like edm sounds but yeah. same sound that we used to have but with more added more sauce to it you know and uh it, it still sounds the same and the old following won't really know the di- mm-hmm. well, they can't tell the difference unless they really pay attention to it mm-hmm. but the new audience the new generation they kind of s- listen to it and compare it to the old classic cumbia and they're like that sounds different you know so they 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 get hooked to that and that's pretty much where we're going with with the new stuff that and it's why we're releasing singles like that do you think have you because having a hit hit is just it's a strange thing right because sometimes like ice ice baby he didn't even like that song like a <laughs> vanilla ice he didn't like yeah. that song but they put it in there yeah uh in the club dr dre didn't even like that beat like he didn't even like he was a B beat and he gave it to Fifty and it became what it is. You know, yeah, yeah. it's so weird how certain things just lined up. Do y'all ever feel with intention trying to do a hit of like, well, of course everything's like, well, hope it hits really hard. But y'all ever set up like, man, I, I just feel like if we'll do something like this, maybe we'll get the hit that we want. So do y'all want a hit like that? Yeah, of course. Um, of course, we we always uh, whenever we write a song, we always have that mentality of of making it a hit mm. and then um. But sometimes we do just kind of make music and we're like, you know, because we'll, we'll know of stories of songs that are released and they weren't even expected to be hits, but they are. Yeah. So we, we'll make a song just, you know, we'll still release it and, you know, just kind of hope for the best. If it hits, then it hits. And uh, But we, we have uh, come in, you know, times where we release a song that we expect it to be a hit, but it doesn't do as well. Yeah, there's <laughs> but, a band... That I did a, a, a episode on. They're called Los Auténticos Decadentes. Oh yeah, they're from uh, Argentina. Argentina. You know how long they've been around? Thirty-five years. Yeah, and okay. they have only, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I remember it's only about five to seven projects. And you know why? Because those fools have not stopped touring since they started going. They say maybe one time they took two months 
uh, break. But uh, they had a couple of hits. It took them a while to get a hit. Yeah. Uh, well, I forget what the name of the one that I remember the most. You remember the that one song? Uh, Manera de Amar. A mí me volvió loco tu forma de ser that one. That was one of their bigger hits. And it took years for them to get there. And they got, I think in Argentina they're well played. Mm -hmm. But it's crazy to me they've been together for more than 35 years. Oh. But they don't have that many discography is not huge. Yeah. But they always tour. Always, always touring. Always busy. Always yeah. busy. <laughs> and I think that's where he's at a lot of the times as far as touring, money-wise. Yeah. yeah. It's like you can go and get the hit and be booked all the time, or you can stay consistent with the touring and always have money, always be made, and always mm -hmm. do well for yourself. Yeah. yeah. Is it a full-time thing for y'all now, or is it getting there, or um, is it better than it was, uh, what, 15 years when we all started? It was a, it was more demanding uh, when we first started. You know, we were playing Thursday to Sunday. Um Uh, different venues mm -hmm. it is more um exhausting too but you know it, i'd say it, it went down a little bit just kind of cooled down um usually is that we, because of the pandemic 2020 is that we've been part to it started going a little bit strange um our, in our case it just kind of started you know slowing down a little bit as far as uh cumbia bands here locally mm -hmm. you know they're not getting booked as much as they used to because now you have like um the new generation that's into like Norteño and Banda and yeah. they're, they're kind of booked more of that stuff. Um, a lot of DJs now that are performing and they have, they offer more of a, uh, like a different type of show right, in their, right. in the quinceanera. So we don't get as booked as much, but you know, I feel like after the pandemic, uh, our, it, ha it has picked up a lot. We're pretty much, you know, filling up the agenda. It's, it's kind of picking good. back up. So that's awesome. I feel like, During this pandemic, people have kind of missed the the live band oh, feel yeah. and like cumbia bands. So oh, yeah. I feel like a lot of venues are also hitting us up for that. So that's it's good. you know I feel like it's 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 getting it's getting in there. That's awesome. So, yeah. and, I, and I hope y'all do uh, get booked often because I again nothing against the DJs, but I just feel like a band <laughs> band live instruments is just like a whole different vibe. Like yeah. even the party, the people, the way they react is just. I don't know. Again, it's like the vibration or whatever. It just feels nice. Yeah. It feels really good. Whenever we are at shows, we also try to interact with, you know, with the crowd, you know, and trying to get them hyped up to put their hands up. And sometimes we'll go down. Do y'all have like, your own DJ? You uh, never had, need, had the need to bring a DJ? We've never had the no. need. The Whenever we get booked for quinces or weddings, they're always like, I only want you guys and I want you guys to play like. Mm -hmm. both sets because usually whenever a DJ is there we only play like one set because mm -hmm. you know there's not enough time for everything so whenever they book us that's that's all they want just Gran Rey is on yeah, there yeah that's cool so you know we're, so we're, so y'all can go for how many hours you think I can play for a quince or anything because this is a long time it's a long yeah. time <laughs> especially if they go until two in the morning <laughs> <laughs> we, we do like two hour sets two hours so, at a so. time yeah so two of those ah, sets so you can do four hours four hours yeah night, playing yeah Gee, that's a lot. We could probably do more if we uh, take like a little bit of a taco break in between. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I don't get tired. <laughs> I get tired just hearing y'all saying for four hours playing? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's sometimes it gets tired. It gets tired trying to keep up the, the, you know, the hype, you know, dancing on stage right. and like doing all that. But if it, if it was just like us playing, just jamming out, I think we'd, we could do that's pretty more, cool, a little bit though. more than four hours but. that's pretty cool though still four <laughs> hours i mean again i'm exhausted just hearing y'all say i'm like yeah me can say i've been uh i've been interested uh because in argentina they'll play like more than seven shows a night and what like, do you mean like bands uh -huh. they'll play like seven different venues really yeah like more than seven um because i'll follow a lot of the bands over there and i'll listen to some of the interviews but they'll they'll talk about how they start like their night at nine And they don't finish their last gig like at six in the morning. Yeah. And and that's like a work day for them. Like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Or Thursday to Sunday. So they'll play like they'll go from venue to venue just playing Are you kidding four me? to five minutes. Are you for real? So they do probably about an hour or two hours per show per venue? Uh, four, 45. 45 minutes. 45, and then they'll jump on to the, to the next to the next venue and then just you know, all over town. Dude, can you remember? Can you think you can handle it? <laughs> hey, if you want the hit, hit. Okay, here's the thing about the hits, right? When you get the hit, because y'all gonna get it if y'all stay with it. Yeah. You remember everything Thank else you. is gonna come with it. For every five, every gigs, every here in the DFW, y'all gonna hit every little spot everywhere. You ready yeah. for that? 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. You say he's ready. I think, I you think you're ready? <laughs> I'm ready. I've been, I've been waiting for that moment. That is wild, dude. <laughs> That's a lot of venues, and I didn't even know bands did that. Yeah. You know? But um, and I think it's doable here in in Dallas. But the scenes changed a lot here, even the clubbing part, because mm-hmm. the clubs are not popping as much. Bars and things like that are popping more mm-hmm. for a little yeah. while, and it's just not the same. Um, mm-hmm. And then some. Con- like concert places is just not doing things of course pandemic wise but as far as like concert there's only a few that do something but that's, that's yeah it. there's there's, there's not, not many like uh, festivals like there used to be yeah. like live music going on like yeah. bars have uh you know, opted in and having djs every night yes yeah. you know nothing nothing i guess djs so. yeah I actually um i do appreciate all, all the djs because that's how uh, our first album got like so many you know plays and it, it got the the stream that it needed did you got your music on those the pools that the usually djs pull from i think there's a couple of pools that djs use that they they go and find new music i don't think so. maybe uh, yeah. i don't know i have to double check i got to give me that link yeah. <laughs> let me uh I'll, I'll hit you up at a later yeah. time because i have a dj he goes to a certain pool all right they, they go and that's mm-hmm. where they find certain things you know sometimes okay. they do go to youtube or facebook yeah. but a lot of them go into like a DJ pools that right. they pull from, and then there's a certain way to get your music in. I don't know how, yeah, but I'm gonna uh, ask to how. The way we used to do it back in the day is like uh, go to the CD, go, <laughs> go to them, giving them CDs, get CDs. But yeah. um, there used to be like a, I guess like two different groups of DJs and dolls, like in the Mexican, mm-hmm. in the Spanish market. So it's like you would give it to one DJ and he would give it to all of the DJs in that in those certain clubs. Mm-hmm. And then you give it to this other DJ and he would give it to the rest of the other clubs. So. That's how like our our music got spread so quick back That's in the cool. day and and uh, you would walk into a club and the, the first cumbia you would hear it would be like sonido de tambor like from our first album and pretty much they they would play all those songs throughout the night yeah so it's like I always called that album the club bangers how do you how do you <laughs> feel like I don't know how how well people receive you how you know artists or like famous wise but how do you feel whenever people do get like kind of like a little bit star starstruck whenever they see uh try to take pictures or anything y'all get anything like that yet uh occasionally I mean, like a trader's village when they ask for pictures yeah how do you feel how does it make you feel um, I'm just chilling it felt, it feels good I mean it feels good that uh Someone, there's got to be a feeling, though. Yeah. you know what I mean. It, it feels just like, like, not super e- egotistical, but at the same time, like, man, all this work that we done fifty years. Even if it's just one little kid that wants to take a picture, like, like they, they admire so you dope. and stuff. Yeah, uh, uh, it feels good to me, especially because I, I make most of the music, so I'm like, get along. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I compose most of the music. Um, See, like, um, y'all stay over there. They wanted me for the yeah, picture. They want the picture. <laughs> oh, no. when, when, when people come up to us, I feel it feels good because you're like. You've impacted someone right. with, with, you know, with the music, and then some. Sometimes we'll get people that tell us like very sad stories. That that's crazy. And they'll tell us how like they they they're always almost like to their they were always to that almost to that point where they were like committing suicide, but uh-huh. they discovered our music like out of nowhere, and then that's really happened. Yeah, it, it, a few we, times. Or? Uh, it's I'd say like three people that we've met um, have really? come out to us like that. Yeah, and. Uh, They've come across our music and they're mm-hmm. like, you know, I, and I, I saw that you guys were from Dallas. You know, they'll tell us, I'll see you guys from Dallas and you guys were playing here. So I decided to come by and, really? and it's like, I saw you guys are real. <laughs> How does that make y'all feel about that? Because that's, that's deep. Yeah. So I think that not whenever you go and prepare for music and doing your recording, you would never think like, I'm going to save somebody's yeah. life. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's a, uh, it actually feels very good and it makes me like very thankful for having the sign and, yeah. and actually gives me um, more of a sense of why I have the sign because, you know, it's it's like we're here to make music, but more than that, it's like to reach out to people and, and give them a good time or like help them with any struggles right. with our music, you know. Yeah. So it, it feels good whenever we reach out to someone like that and like that we know that they didn't do anything bad to their health or anything just because yeah, they heard one of our songs. So it, it feels great. Um, and occasionally they still message us and like they still come to our show. So, you know, it feels great to still see them. Yeah. You, yeah. you mind if, if, I mean, I don't want to put them on blast or anything, but anything, anybody that you, even if it's the first name or nickname, they said, shout out to them for, you know, jamming out to your music or not really? Um, I, can't again, remember. I, 
I don't want to put them on blast or put them in the spotlight, <laughs> but you know, well, you yeah. know what? Let's just do it in general. You know, shout out to them. For, shout out to all, all the following. Yeah, all, everyone that, especially the ones that were touched deeply. Yeah. For, for the sounds yeah. you did, and it's Thank crazy to me. Yeah. I would never think by the time that I interview you'd be like something so deep like that. Yeah. And that's crazy because I wake up every day like I'm kind of you can say I believe in God. You know, mm. I have if spirit, whatever you want to say. God, I just, I'm a firm believer in it, you know? Mm -hmm. I feel it to my core. Even though I don't go to church and different things like that, just, you know, my own relationship with it is just absolutely mine, and I feel like that's the way it should be. Right. But a lot of times, uh, you know, we forget and, and we take it for granted as far as life and how the things that people go go through life, because we, we got our own thing, but we don't worry about sometimes what other people are going through, struggles mm -hmm. and things like that. So when I wake up every morning, uh, on my spiritual, my journey here, I say, uh, I know that I, uh, I'm not immortal. I am mortal and I will die one day. Mm -hmm. You know, I will depart from this, this physical body. And then people will be like, Oh, you're weird. You're going to die. It's not to scare me. It's just the fact that I am, I'm mortal. I have a time here. And then whatever purpose it is, I feel like it's just living and doing what I do. And then for the fact that you, know that you have a purpose to play music and that it can affect somebody and it literally save their life is i think it's really deep yeah. and it's cool it's pretty here and yeah. i i like that i appreciate yeah, you sharing so, that yeah after that actually uh it changed the whole perspective with, with uh, music is um for a long time i was like you know just making music for for myself you know for fun right, and i was like right. I, I was like if it hits you know if it hits but if not oh well <laughs> but um i, I kind of learned and i i realized that you know Everything you do, you just got to put your heart to it because yeah. you don't, you never know who you're going to touch with, yeah. with whatever art you're making. So I think I think some of the reasons why I feel like certain things are hits hits is because they really like it's, it sounds funny when they say people say speak from the heart or whatever. What does that really mean? Right. It's whenever you really are delivering the thing, you really come in for everything within here and it goes to the mic. And for whatever reason, when it comes out the speaker, people can feel it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it does something to them that makes you want to, like, listen more or hear something to be like, I'm I'm about to do something crazy to myself, but then all of a sudden something clicking me. At the way that you deliver, all of a sudden it makes me just snap out of it and like, hey, you know what? Let me just not. I mean, yeah. it's not, not that that serious, you know? Because mm -hmm. a lot of times they're not that serious. Yeah. And I don't eat meat. I don't eat. I'm mostly, like, I was born in Mexico. Uh, mostly you could say a vegan as far as my diet, but I felt like a lot of the times, uh, certain things like that helped me with my, my mind because not only I'm a, a and I said, I sound like I talk about the same thing over, but it's just part of my life. I'm also a veteran. So I went to, I went to Iraq for about, uh, 10 solid months. I got deployed. And it was all volunteer. I put myself in that situation, whatever. When we came, when I came back, I didn't feel like I was right, uh, as far as, the things, the way that I was acting and, you know, everything else, like changing my diet and everything, I think is very important and, and it helped me clear a lot of things. And I, I feel like for whatever reason, I don't know why I'm sharing with you this, but I'm just saying, I think the food itself, the, the it's, a, it's a very important in people's lives, you know, mm -hmm. right. and as far as people having depression and things, I just feel like it's a thing. Mm -hmm. It's a thing that's really connected. Uh, because if they say you are what you eat and all these animals are are sad, then we eat them, <laughs> then it makes you feel kind of sad. You know what I mean? Yeah, I heard so something weird. like that. Yeah. So I think, and even with little things like the music, it just ca can help you change and it does influence people. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad that it, it, it did change people's life that they're still here. Yeah. Because yeah. be life mm -hmm. is a beautiful thing. It is. Yeah. We, don't, we don't take it for granted. That Vivir Mi Vida song from Mark Anthony, mm -hmm. I think oh. it really connected with people because they really felt like they were related. They can relate to it. And at any situation where you were mad, sad, or whatever, you can like kind of you still connect with it, right? Whether you were going through a divorce, whether you were going through a breakup, when you were enjoying your relationship, when you were, you know, going through some anything, when people were disliking you, and all of a sudden you can connect. Nothing hits like songs that are connect with people, just they can feel that, you know. Mm -hmm. Tips for a song later on. There you go. But yeah, to make to be like ah. <laughs> all right. So all your music can be found where? Where can people find you and all your social media? Is there anything else that you have that you wanted to say or talk or anything like that? No. 
You good? You're talking a lot, bro. You need to be quiet. <laughs> be ready for the <laughs> for the new stuff. Yeah, that new stuff. Gonna... Yeah. A little new bit singles. of a different sound, but still, still y'all stick to, to the core. Y'all the core, sound. Yeah, definitely. You? Yeah. Nothing more. No. No. I I'm think... just gonna try to write more. You gonna try to write? You, gotta... <laughs> you know what I dislike? I dislike the word try for a long time. You know? right. Cause you, t- let me tell you why. Cause I feel like trying is like you're already doing it. You know, yeah. you already do stuff. And trips me out because I think it does something to your brain to set you that you're gonna try, but it doesn't. It, it, it you already do the thing. You already write. You know, attempt to do. I I like to do attempt for whatever reason because I feel like your brain you trick your own brain your own psychology to not to do it. But technically you are doing it. You know, yeah. you're not attempt. You're not trying anything. You're doing the writing. Y'all doing the music. We're trying. No, no, we are doing. We executing. We're like literally are. Doing everything that we want to, and trying to me makes you, to me, feel like it puts you, sets you back. Now we are doing it. We are this, yeah. Los Gran Reyes, and do we it. are doing it everywhere. You know what <laughs> I mean? Just do it, man. <laughs> That's why. Why you think Nike was so successful? Just do it. Because yeah, after a while, people making kids ah, you know, I think of this and that. Just do it. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, like, yeah, why am I making all these excuses? Why not? Why not just do it? Which right. it makes a whole lot of he sense. Said, to he it. Said, he says a lot of trying. I'll yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, but that's the thing. I, I think you, that's you his way of, of saying that I'll do it. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna do it, but yeah. I'm always like, just do it, man. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer in, in words. How much power they have, you know, and how much yeah. our psychology could be affected by the things that we do. Like I, I don't talk to myself crazy. Like I don't call myself a tonto or anything like that. Yeah, I made a mistake. I own it, and then I'm like, I'm dope. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, yeah. I this. I do that. You know, it took me years to get this the podcast going. For a little while, because I've done different things, radio and different yeah. things. And I just know I always was like a part of a thing, but not my own thing. And I'm, mean, you know what? Let me just do my thing because I wanted to do my thing. You not know? because anybody else I want to be part of a group, because I need to focus on the things that I want to do. Mm-hmm. And then I need to execute on too many. It took a couple of years to get Carlos over here. He ain't even paying attention to what he's doing. <laughs> but finally, we got everything set up the low end, and then we finally got it going. And, and after, again, you just got to do it. And it took me a little while to get it going, but I, I didn't do, I didn't say try. I said, I'm going to keep working at it until I got it and, and I did it. Yeah. You got something cool going on. I also like the logo and I, I appreciate think the it. I think he's a Latino vibe thing. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I got all the flags Colors, except for one, but I'm not going to say that somebody forgot, but uh, shout out to all my Latinos <laughs> and all the flags we got going on here. Damn. So, okay. <laughs> back. So the new projects that are coming out. And I'll be on the lookout for it. Core to the core, y'all's rhythm with, with a little twist. Yeah. And people are going to enjoy it. Where can people find your music? Yeah, so I'll, I'll let the, Chris. The streaming on. platforms, you know, Spotify, um, Pandora, Apple Music, then probably a YouTube also. I think. YouTube. Might pop you have up a lot of YouTube. Yeah. We, oh, you have, yeah. have a lot of YouTube. We, I, I've, I've made it to where we're everywhere, like on every platform. You're every, Googleable. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so just look just it up on Google. Los Gran Reyes, you know, very easy. The website too. You have yeah. the website. Los, well. Losgranreyes.com. Yeah. Yeah. So you can find our stuff easier there. Um, okay. Yeah. So people like to do this and I, I don't mind doing it, but let's just say in, in two years, a, sh- a short, short term, me, me Espanol and me English intertwining in two years, a short term goal and five years, what do you see yourselves? All right. So two years, short term, and then five years, long term goal. What would that be? Short term, uh, doing the Mexico and Argentina tour. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're like dedicated into getting that going. Um, Five years actually getting our music to like some of these, uh, you know, uh, award, getting that cumbia category up there, uh, you know, kind of you. help, you. you know, get it in a category for like awards and, you know, get it commercial. Yeah. Make I, it commercial. Any are religious at all or yeah. like spiritual yeah, or I believe am. in manifesting or seeing things? I know so because of the way you talk. Mm-hmm. That's how you're grateful for it. That's a word. You know what I mean? <laughs> you. you don't say that just because, yeah. you know, because you have an understanding of the reason why. Right. So any, you know, so yeah, I ever see anything like that. It's just like li- literally see it. And, you know, there's, I'm pretty sure you heard of it, the law of attraction and things like that. Mm-hmm. I think you, I think that movie or that movement is just like a little bit of a thing. Mm-hmm. That that it could be a reality if you really put your your like li- really see it and touch things and as you sing you know mm-hmm. what I mean yeah, yeah you get a different vibe and and I think if y'all do those goals like I think you feel like you're doing then mm-hmm. y'all are gonna be in Argentina and Mexico doing the thing sure, for right. real and sure. then the categories and 
being in like the Grammy, Latin Grammy, so Premios Juventud or yeah. things like that, I'll be like, yeah, I can definitely see it. If y'all see it and y'all can really touch it, yeah, then it's crazy. Definitely. It's a it's a weird thing that they say. Um, so I I be deep, bro. Sorry, and I know I'm yeah, interviewing y'all, but it, it trips <laughs> me out. Certain system certain, system that, certain people say. But they don't understand, it and it treats me out that they say right because we don't know. So a lot of people say pray, right? And they literally, if you're religious or not, it, it says if you read the Bible, it says how to pray. But people don't know how to pray. What do they do when they pray? They ask, mm-hmm. and it's not the way they do it. It says to to say like if you already have it, like you already own it, like it's already yours. It doesn't say yeah. ask anything or think anything. It says literally just say it like it's already like. Call it into existence like it's already yours. And it literally says that, and people don't know how to do it. And even though it's there, mm-hmm. I always say the same thing, that knowledge is not power. Knowledge is, uh, not the, whatever you do with the knowledge is the real power, right? Because you can read every book there is, you can play every instrument that is, you can write whatever, but if you don't put it into practice to do things, that it's, it's powerless. It's just yeah. sitting there, yeah. you know? That's right. And that's the things that, aren't, that people don't understand, that they know, the, how to, they know that they're supposed to pray, and even though they read how to pray, but it treats me out they really don't know how to pray. Mm-hmm. Like if you really, it's already yours. You claim it like it's yours and literally take it with you and that's it. Yeah. And then people treat me out that they read it and it just sh- sh- goes by. <laughs> goes by yeah. And it treats me out to me. So, you know, if y'all do believe in that, I think it, it will make a difference for y'all. And yeah. I seen y'all and I, I'm going to apologize because I let y'all down before in some shows that we done because we had low budget and not engineering uh-huh. <laughs> and it wasn't that but I appreciate y'all being professional and still rocking right. and uh, I like I like y'all sounds uh, otherwise I wouldn't even approach y'all to try to Just, even uh, do anything we, we prepared we actually uh, upgraded our, our our equipment so we can be prepared for those type for, of for try a situation yeah. well I I uh, <laughs> So, I am thankful just, that I'm able to give you that experience so you don't have to run into it whenever you run into people like us. Like, because I've done shows before and uh, it wasn't prepared. Yeah. And I was working with what I was had. And, and, I, and I, I, I'm glad that you, you were professional, first of all. Mm-hmm. I know it was a little frustrating, but I do appreciate that because you were. But they teach you a lesson to be ready. So you run into the situation with, with, with promoters that are not ready to bring you on and do a show. So right. thank you. I appreciate you. experience. Any, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Any last thoughts or anything else that you have? Yeah, so um, I want to appreciate all the fans that, are, that follow us, all the following, all the people that listen to our music. Thank you very much for supporting, uh, especially the cumbia here in Dallas. Um, help us build that cumbia scene here in Dallas because uh, there's a lot of great musicians, or a lot of Latinos that are trying to make it out here and uh, they require a lot of your help. Absolutely. Yeah. And shout out to all the members. Yeah, I want to say yeah, their yeah. names real quick. Yeah, for Mi Tio Pancho, uh-huh. my dad, Agustin. Then we got Gloria and Sara. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, we, we, got, a, we got a new guy. Yeah, I think we got Gabriel. I think he's gonna be joining us. Oh yeah, Gabriel we got it. Yeah. Well, breaking and news trombone. here. Yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> so give that exclusive to trombone. Yeah, that's um, dope. So it's like a family affair thing. Uh, yeah, like yeah, really, we're pretty much family. pretty much family, right? Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, so uh, the Granada Granada Reyes, Granada Reyes, and like every member that joins the band uh, over time, just, they get a tattoo of y'all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get the so they leave. Tattoo. Either they got to cover or be property. Yeah. Nah, y'all gotta make it. Y'all make it property <laughs> of los Gran Reyes, <laughs> like your equipment. Yeah, so if y'all leave. All right, y'all can go if y'all want to. It don't matter. <laughs> you no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, it's even better. Watch. This is what. Don't listen, band members. Y'all get them really drunk, right? <laughs> Passed out. And then y'all do the tattoo on them and they don't realize it. <laughs> and when and then y'all put it over here like in the lower back so they don't so see it. <laughs> and then before you know it, even if they leave, one day was like, what is that? Probably a little gun. He's like, what is that? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> and that's how y'all make sure like, oh, yeah, y'all can leave you if you want to. But y'all steal our property. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Y'all people, y'all are not things. But uh, I appreciate y'all very much the time. It's probably going to release in a couple of weeks. Uh, the time we record, we pre-record it. And uh, we'll get it out to y'all so y'all can have something so y'all can put out the people want to know about y'all, y'all mm-hmm. history. And I think we went pretty much in depth of everything that, uh, that where y'all started from, how y'all started and changing different things like that. Yeah. And uh, so. it's pretty cool. So next time y'all have a gig, let me know because I want to go check mm-hmm. y'all out. And next project y'all have, just let me know because I do want to check it out. I, I want to hear the. We don't want to hear the vibe. I'm going to YouTube, yeah, because I'm always on YouTube. Yeah. And I'm not going to pay for premium either. I'll, I'll skip the commercial. I'll wait a couple yeah. seconds, but I'm not paying. I, I, didn't, I didn't even monetize them, so I don't know why they're getting commercials really? for the video. Yeah, I'm not sure what YouTube is doing, but 
yeah, they yeah. do whatever they want to, honestly. Yeah. It sucks yeah. so we have some... Yeah, they so just put ads on everything now. Right? Yeah. It's a good thing you have your website because they have... Well, you have a link to YouTube too? Yeah, God, but I'll just, post them on Facebook every, yeah. soon. So. Straight, yeah. Just whatever but, yeah. y'all can. But yeah, I'm not buying premium. Yeah. I'm still going to look <laughs> look, yes, look you, y'all YouTube up your new like, songs. He doesn't want to pay for premium. Let me put in two ads. <laughs> you know what I've done before? He skips the okay. skip ads. You know what's I'll funny? The whole thing. Okay, so... You know how sometimes they offer like a month free? Yeah. So I've done it before a few times. <laughs> no, one time. And then I thought it was going to be just that one time. And then they came back again. One month free. Oh, no. I'm like, I'm about to see this. Oh, every three months, I'll be like free. Like a couple of days before, take it off. And yeah. I will. I'll yeah. remember. And then I'll do it again. Wait. Skip. Another three months. Another three I swear, they've done it again. And like one free month, I'm like. <laughs> Bro, I'm about to use your up. And it's it. nice. Don't get me wrong. YouTube with a premium is really nice because it does get annoying after the commercials, yeah. but I'm not paying them for premium. Yeah. I think I'm going to work. You hear me? I know you're hearing me. <laughs> I'm going to work you. <laughs> Anyways, well, again, I do appreciate y'all. Uh, social media. Yeah. Los Gran Reyes in, on Facebook, Instagram, just Los Gran Reyes. What else are we on? TikTok now. We're making TikToks. <laughs> It's the wave. It's the wave. It's the wave. I'm, hey, make sure you follow me. We just got to get more active yeah. on it. Hey, I have a, I posted a Selena because I went to a car club and a car show in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And they had the Selena, uh, the Selena car from the movie. Oh, nice. Because yeah. the real, the real event for the car pulling the, the, the car pulling the bus didn't happen according to <laughs> AB, right? Yeah. But in the movie they did. It's a Hollywood thing. Yeah. Anyways, that car. <laughs> was in the car show and at three years ago i think three or four years ago i did a video on it mm -hmm. and i put it on a tiktok just like hey i ran into the car i kind of misled people my bad if y'all got me a tiktok <laughs> i said uh that one time i ran into the car that pulled the bus of selena but i didn't say it was for real or not <laughs> and it was the, that car yeah. and it was from hollywood but people were like oh that that says a film car people be really looking at the videos i'm like yeah that's that is the card that won the movie. Fifteen thousand, fifteen thousand views right now, bro. Fifteen thousand views on the little video on my two hundred followers. Shout out to my TikTok followers. Yeah, TikTok's this one little already. thing will take you to the next. You know what I mean? That's yeah. crazy. And TikTok is the wave right now. Yeah, it really is definitely. still is. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, get just before you know it. You know who knows, bro? It might. It'll be. I watched this guy do a video the other day on TikTok. He said in one year. Uh, it changed his whole life, like in one mm -hmm. TikTok video. I'm not saying because I don't. I'm not the creative type. I just yeah. post, post retarded stuff, and I know <laughs> I'm not gonna create a niche of people that follow me like that. Yeah. But it's crazy for him. His niche in one year it changed his whole entire life. You know. Yeah. And before y'all know it, Argentina. Yeah, that's where we're trying to go. Mexico. Oh, Mexico. Y'all yeah. gonna go. Yeah, so we are going to go. Yeah. All right. Well, again, this is another episode of the Global Latin Factor Podcast. Remember, we are just like you. We're just the spice in this global melting pot that it is the world. We'll see you again on the next episode. Until next time. See ya. Thank you.